Okay, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of our podcast. So today, me and Henry, our chief market analyst, are going to be talking about the markets, give each other some questions, and we'll just go from there. So, Henry, welcome. Thank you very much, Charlie. So, I've got a question for you. Yeah. What strategies have you found most effective in managing risk while trading in the FX market? So, um... I've tried a lot of strategies in my trading journey, and one of the strategies that I found most helpful to help me to manage risk is me going from the higher time frame, understanding the bigger time frame perspective. And because I'm a swing trader and I'm looking at where is the market going in the next three, four, six months, so I'm looking for opportunities to follow the trend. I'm not trying to trade against the trend or counter trend yeah. i just want to go with the trend and it comes with a lot of downside as well because you have to be very patient for you to be a swing trader yeah. because you could have weeks where you don't see a setup because price hasn't come into your point of interest so what i do is when i go from the bigger time frame i usually start analyzing from the 12 months six months three months then i go to the monthly to understand the perspective of price action, where to enter, whether I'm looking for an inefficiency or a previous low or high liquidity for price to run that liquidity, then go towards my direction. And then once price is there, the next thing I'm doing is watching for significant breaks of structure, like one hour break of structure, 30 minutes break of structure, four hour break of structure. So once I see a four hours break, then that means that the overall trend that I'm anticipating for price to go to, price has shifted towards that trend. Now yeah. I'm looking for retracement whether it's an inefficiency or liquidity once price is there then i'm scaling down to look for smaller time frame shift to market structure scaling down from 15 minutes time frame five minutes time frame once i see that the next thing i do is to look for entries i either i'm using the high after the five minutes break of structure i'm using an inefficiency but i really try not to use the exact point or the exact open of the inefficiency because i've noticed from experience sometimes my broker wouldn't uh, kick me into the trade yeah so what i usually do is i add an extra one or two pips before it yeah a bit so of breathing that, room yeah, yeah so even if i'm not using the overall high if i'm using an inefficiency within the range i'm trying as much as possible to give it a little room because if you're trading with the smaller time frame there could be a lot of uh, uh slippage and yeah, lots of stuff definitely. could make the trade hard to take you in and i also add a little <clears throat> bit to my stop loss either an extra two pips or three pips just to make sure that it doesn't take me out in case of there's massive volatility yeah. due to high impact news or something coming out uh, during an economic calendar or whatever yeah, yeah. just makes volatility to kick in so that's how i've noticed that has helped me because i tried several strategies when i started trading i tried several strategies from support resistance and I was always taking significant losses and I didn't really understand why, but when I now, but I think it's all about experience, you know, as you go, as yeah, you learn more, sure. understand how the intricacies in the marketplace, understand the fundamentals and then the technicals, you know, it's all starts to add up and then your understanding about price action grows from there. Yeah. So that's basically how I go in about In terms strategy. of managing risk specifically though, how how have you found works best for yourself, your personality? I'm, I'm talking in terms of how actual about, percentage How risk. much percentage I'm yeah. risking. So if I'm risking a percentage, the percentage I risk per trade, it's dependent on the time frame I'm taking the trade off of. Okay. So if, if it's a swing trade, and then I'm taking a trade off price coming into a weekly point of interest. I could risk around 0.3 to 0.5 maximum. Okay. But if I'm taking a trade and it's from like four hour point of interest, I'm risking 0.15, 0.2 max. Wow. I try not to go beyond that because um, I've noticed a lot of the time, yeah, I know some traders are like, yeah, risk 5%, 10%, which is great and it works for them <laughs> and I'm happy for them. Yeah. But for me, I've realized that everything in the market is a probability. Yeah, of course. You, you can't yeah. say that price is definitely going to do this. Yeah. You can't, there's no certainty because anything can happen. The market could just do the opposite. Yeah. And wipe Absolutely. you out yeah, and yeah. if you're risking if you're over leveraging on a position it's just gonna wipe you out and literally just mess up your psychology and once you have that mental drawdown your account is blown yeah <laughs> before you even yeah, start seeing yeah. the drawdown yeah. on your account 
the moment you encounter that mental drawdown, yeah, your account is blown. That's when you've lost the hope, you've lost all you know, sense of direction, yeah, emotionally, yeah, and then you just start taking trades you shouldn't even be in because you're trying to make up for that loss, yeah, you know. But when I'm using small losses, when I'm using small risk, yeah, yeah. And I take small losses. It, it doesn't really affect me in any way. I could care less for losing 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because I know that the next trade, all I need is just one trade that is gonna hit between a one is to three to one is to five, and I'm good for the next three to five trades. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's just how I, I go through. It, it goes from my strategy, my strategy, and the point of interest I'm using, what time frame, and then the risk that I'm gonna use on that trade. So if it's it's a higher time frame that means it's a higher probability yeah but if it's a lower time frame that means it's a lower probability so i'm reducing the risk okay i see what you're saying so yeah i mean so how i do it in terms of the risk parameters for me it depends on what account i'm trading a funded evaluation a funded live account or live capital of my yeah. own funds so for example, my own money, that's yeah. actually my account, personal funds, I'm risking 1%, sometimes yeah. even less. 0.8% to be honest, to be specific, because I like to account for commissions, spreads, yeah. swaps, yeah. that sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. any costs that are on that specific trade yeah. would take it to 1%, so it's yeah. maximum 1%. So that's what I do with personal funds. And then with prop firm challenges and evaluations, Typically, I like to risk 0.5 to 1%. There has been times where I've risked 1.5% on those accounts just to try and get the profit target. This was when, by the way, this was when there was a time limit, whereas that's not a thing anymore. Yeah, true. So now it's more like 0.5 to 1% risk on those accounts. And then with funded live accounts, I like to risk 0.25 to 0.5. It's more often than not around the 0.25% now because it just allows a big buffer you know it allows it allows for the losing streaks it allows for the slow periods and yep. with obviously the prop firm accounts being larger amount 0.25 percent is still a considerable yeah. amount of money yeah. yeah you know so yeah that's what works best for me i mean it took me a bit of a while to understand that i remember on one of my first prop firm accounts i got sucked into following people on social media that were doing much bigger trades than myself and this one guy was saying um you know oh you should risk two percent of your prop firm account because think of the money so the younger naive version of myself did think about the money and that's all i was thinking about and when yeah. i did start risking two percent of that account i pretty much blew the account within a week yeah <laughs> and that took me two months to to get gradually 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 so you know it's all lessons it's all experience isn't it i mean following on from that that's when i understood okay once you've got the account then it's time to be a bit more conservative and play the longer game because once you've obviously with the evaluations now like i said there's no time limit but back then when you had the account there is no time limit there's no profit target you have to make 10 percent this month you have to do this you have to do that there's no specific rules obviously the only thing to yeah. to keep in mind is the risk obviously there's still daily max limits and overall max limits yep. obviously but yeah like i said just lowering that risk allowed allowed for the losing streaks because they are going to come we all know that yeah whether it's you're losing three in a row, four in a row, five in a row. I've mentioned before as well on a specific system that I trade with Euro dollar, there is times where I'll lose 10 trades in a row comfortably, even 15 sometimes. Yeah. But because of that high risk to reward, it's just the maths game, you know, like yeah. you said yeah. a minute ago, you can win two trades, three trades, and you're back to where you are, even in profit. So yeah, that's what's worked best for myself. Um, in terms of the strategy, I know you were saying about going from the higher time frames down, which is also what I like to do as well. But again, the way I trade now, it's more diversified. So I'll have one system over there doing a specific thing, another system doing another thing, and another system doing another thing. One system, for example, is similar to that. You look at the higher time frames, get the key levels, it is support and resistance, yeah. I guess you could say, um, coupled with Fibonacci's, candlestick patterns. So that's a good system. Um, that's typically got anywhere between, I would say, a 40 to 70% win rate. It's fairly decent because I'm going for yeah. a minimum one to one, sometimes even one to two, one to three, one to fours. So that can be very, very profitable. And that was actually the system that I originally learned when I was getting into Forex. And that's how I got my funded accounts that I've 
first got um, a few years ago, back in 2020 now. And then the other systems, lower win rate, but higher risk to reward. So yeah, it's just nice to have that option now because on my personal account, I trade all of them, all at 1% risk, yep. all, all of the three systems. So the way I see it is if one system is underperforming and one system is performing, it's, it's kind of giving that system more bullets to trade with, more opportunity to basically more trades to potentially put into the market, if that makes sense. So, yep. for example, if I do go into a, a four or five losing streak, for example, on one system, I might have the other system win one trade and that's already took the account into profit. So, yeah, I think that's definitely something I didn't expect myself doing, looking back. I didn't expect myself to be trading multiple systems, but for me, it is working and it's consistently yep. pulling in profits, which is the main thing. So that's all we can ask for, really, as traders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? the, the most important thing in trading is what works for you. Exactly. You know, and yeah. um, one thing I've realized uh, while being a trader, being in the industry, is what works for you may not work for another person, and what works for another person may not work for you. Yeah, It's just 100%. like um, when, yeah. you, when you want to derive two, one plus one is two, four minus two is two, yeah. Six divided by three is two. I love that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it, yeah. The most important thing is to get to the destination. How you get there doesn't really matter. Yeah. What matters is you make profit at the end of the day. You know, and if you're trading two systems and two of them, you know how to manage them and it works for you. That's perfect. You know, there are other people like me personally. It's really hard for me to trade two systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I can really get a little bit addicted to a system okay you know so yeah. that's why like how i look at cryptos how i look at forex stocks and everything it's literally the same system that yeah, i used to fair enough i always go from bigger time frame i'm looking at from bigger time frame to the smaller time frame and then i'm doing my fundamental analysis to understand if it's forex i'm doing fundamental analysis to understand what is the interest rate for this currency yeah and then I'm analyzing the other pair that are, it's being traded again. So let's say it's um, like GBP US dollar. I'm looking at the interest rate for the pound, the interest rate for the dollar. And then when I'm deriving the two, and now I'm now going to the higher time frame yeah, to yeah. look at the higher time frame. What is what am I seeing on the higher time frame to align the fundamentals? with the technicals yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I start to do quantitative analysis to see the previous performance, what did it do when it came down, what did it do okay. now, I'm now analyzing how high or low can it go, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just stuff like that, I just add them all together. So it's basically the same system I use even when I'm investing in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. You know, you've seen me do that, I still go yeah, from yeah. crypto, look at the fundamentals, why is this asset something that has, that is going to have a high potential for growth in the future. I then and once I'm done with the fundamentals, I'm now looking at what partnerships do they have. I'm looking at what the community is like when it's, it's a crypto project, yeah. how engaged uh, the community, how many people have it on their watch list. Because all those things okay. are very important. Because, yeah, of course. Because if you don't really know, let's say, for example, a project is really amazing, but it has a bad team that are not working hard to promote it, yeah. bad marketing, and then not enough people have it on their watch list and I'm seeing it's bullish on technicals. I'm not going to just go all in on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to be skeptical because everything does not align. Yeah. You know, I need all my checklists to align. Now, all of my checklists being aligned still doesn't mean for 100% that it's going to perform well, but it means there's a high probability for it to perform well. Yeah. You know, so that makes sense. it's just how I look at everything that has to do with the financial market, both in trading and investing. Like we were talking about risk, it still aligns with how much risk I'm going to put into a trade or an investment. Okay. Because if everything aligns with my checklist, that means this is a product. This is a big trade for yeah, me. I so I can yeah. increase my risk to like 0.5 yeah. or a little bit higher. I never try to get to 1%. Okay. I can go, the maximum I can go is like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. But that trade needs to be like phenomenal. 
Yeah. You know, it needs to be like I've done analysis from 12 months, monthly, weekly. Yeah. Everything aligns. Every single thing aligns. And I'm like, okay, this is a mega trade. You know, Mm -hmm. then I can put in more risk. And for me to put that more risk, it's going to be first entry 0.5%. Then I'm looking for a re entry. Yeah. In the smaller time frame. I'm now scaling into three minutes time frame, looking for more shift to market structure. Once I see that, I can now put in another risk, maybe 0.25 or 0.2%. Okay. You know, that's, but the two, the 0.5% and the 0.2%, they're going to give me the same profit. Yeah, because of the risk to reward. Yes, yeah. because I'm now using the very smaller time frame. Yeah. So the risk to reward for that one is going to be higher. You've really zoomed in, scoped yes. in. Yeah. So it's yeah. just how I played the game in trading, but investing and everything and i'll say so far it's really been amazing it's really expanded my knowledge about trading investing because i can remember like years back when i started out in trading and even investing it was all a blur i felt like I didn't yeah, yeah. Really, and it was really hard getting the right information out there because um there's too many gurus out there telling you um, i'm a forex millionaire i'm a crypto millionaire yeah and then you just want to jump in and start trading like them thinking they know what they're doing because yeah. there isn't really any certification to show that this person knows what they're talking about. It's just the shiny object syndrome, isn't it? Yes, yeah. that's the thing. That's the, So people just believe that because yeah. someone is driving a Lamborghini, <laughs> That person knows what they're talking about. Yeah, and yeah. that's why if you go on social media, most people who are trading or investing in the financial market, the first the, their certification is look at my house. Yeah. Look car, at my Lamborghini. Yeah. You know. Watch. Yeah. You yeah. Know, chains. Look, yeah. yeah. So it's just I feel like there, there there needs to be that certification. Because you can't just come out and tell someone because you you just um got an admission in a medical school. You can't come out and tell someone I'm a doctor. Yeah. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Or I'll come and tell someone you're a lawyer because you just, uh, your first year in law school. Yeah, very true. Yeah, but in trading, someone's just going to have one month experience and they're forex trader. <laughs> <laughs> Change the bio. <laughs> so it, it, it's just, I felt like that certification needs to be present. And that is one of the things I love about UKTA with the master's degree program. Yeah. Because it's now makes it, now when you have that certification, you can clearly say, yeah, I have an MBA, financial trading. Yeah. You know, you have something to show for it it's not just word of mouth showing all the shiny objects yeah. it now goes beyond that you know that's why if, if i'm a trader if you're listening if you're a trader the best thing you can do for yourself is to get that certification because it differentiates you from other traders you know so when you're talking to other people who are trading or not traders you have something you can show that doesn't have to be a shiny object you don't have to show someone yeah. your rolex watch or your lamborghini to tell them you're a trader just like someone who's a doctor is not gonna come showing you their house yeah look at the new chain i bought you yeah, know? yeah yeah that's that's what now makes them a successful doctor or lawyer it doesn't yeah. happen in other industries it's just only in trading that you see that happening exactly yeah and the thing is with that as well it's like who are you trying to impress you know yeah because you know a lot of people are trying to impress other people and that's fine if you want to do that go ahead but i know for myself now my main goal is to impress investors real businessmen that have money to invest in myself into the business to really take my personal trading career to the next level and even with the mba like you said if you've got that certification you've got a track record you don't need to be buying all of these things to impress people that might want to learn realistically you should be impressing people quote above you because they're going to give you a leg up and they're going to give you an opportunity to either join a company a bank yeah. hedge fund or to go private you know handle yeah. private equity that sort of thing again like social media with any other industry i don't think it's as potent with the amount that it's forced in people's faces yeah like profits 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 yeah mt4 screenshots look what i've done look what i've done any other industry it's just like people get on with it go a different route i guess i know that with any other industry you know in comparison to this one i I mean i've I've always thought this right on mt4 when there's a demo account and when there's there's a live account when you're in profit on both of them yeah it's still blue isn't it on both yeah i've always thought why didn't they just make it green for one a demo and blue for live because then you couldn't fake it well obviously you'd get some people that i don't know would edit the video and imagery and stuff like that but i've always thought why have they made it so easy for people to fake things like that yeah 
you know, um, this is one thing among many other things that UKTA have really stood out for me. I've said it in the past and I'll say it again, is the authenticity around it. We're actual traders. The CEO has traded for multiple years, Paul, and we're here putting our face and names to it. We've got nothing to hide, sharing our analysis with members, sharing trade ideas as well. So everyone can, you know, learn from us and, you know, potentially even profit from similar trades as well. But, you know, the main thing with that is for the people, for the members to understand why we're doing certain things it's not like i'm doing this so you have to do it yeah. it's like i'm doing this if you would like to learn why and then all the rest of it this is why you know we've got the courses we've got the educational content and stuff like that um what's your what's your view on someone making a course that has no backing for example again going back to social media you've got many many gurus out there making courses i'm talking about forex now there are obviously yeah. other businesses where people make courses i know that but what's your thoughts on the people making courses teaching people what to do but they've not necessarily got a master's or even a track record something as simple as yeah. a track record yeah. a verified track record within the fx industry what's your thoughts on that yeah i think um before someone should it's before someone can teach other people how to do a thing whatever thing that is yeah you need to have a track record to show how you've done this you know and it's it's not really like i said i don't like to put money as the track record but when it comes to trading it still boils down to results yeah you know people want to see results and that is one of the reasons why most people who create courses what they do is because they don't have the results now they use the lifestyle yes yeah. as the results yes marketing you know and then they do the marketing and then when you check when you check their socials and the background you don't really see much about the strategy they're trading mm. all you see is the lifestyle you know which in my opinion i think it's wrong it should be based off the strategy you're trading whatever it is you're doing that is working that sh that's that should be the lifestyle yeah whatever else should be attached behind it that's true and not that's, that's, in front that's of it that's the thing that's getting you to where you want to be yes so it should be based around that yeah it should be based around yeah. the strategy you're yeah. trading with so i have a course and this is the course this is what the course is all about if you come and see my lifestyle you see that that is what i do yeah. what i do is this strategy then whatever lifestyle i'm living it's something else behind that this is separate from the strategy yeah yeah, yeah. My strategy has nothing to do with me living in Dubai yeah. or me <laughs> yeah. being in Bahamas. It has absolutely nothing to do yeah. with that. All you need to see is this is the strategy. This is how I trade the market. This is the entry. And I will show you backtested data, show you track record of life analysis, life trades, whether it's investment, life investments. You can see, like I was showing you one of the uh, small account that I literally, because I wanted to show that everyone from anywhere can make money from yeah, the market definitely and you don't need to have a lot of money no. in your account you can literally start with as low as a few hundreds to a thousand yeah and you saw the exponential growth of over 400 percent within like a few months like two three months yeah you know so that is the track record i don't need to start showing you that exactly, i have yeah. a lamborghini i have two houses here yeah. or there or this to for you to believe if that's not enough for someone to see that this strategy works and they feel like they just want someone who's gonna show them they have a lamborghini yeah, and yeah not yeah. show them anything about the strategy and how it works and show them a portfolio that you can track and see the performance so far of that strategy then i don't think i'm the right person for you <laughs> you know if you feel yeah. like this is how you, this is what you want yeah, the lamborghini yeah. you want it to be at the forefront yeah you know then i'm i'm not the right mentor or educator for you yeah. you know because at the forefront is my strategy this is how i trade this is how this is the results this is how anybody from anywhere can learn how to do this and do this on your own yeah that is the forefront and i think most people who put the lifestyle in front if you dig deep you'll see that over 90 percent of them are not really they are not actual traders yeah you a know? lot of people do that now, most of them are yeah, not actual yeah. traders they yeah. just use it for marketing and they get people buy their courses and then they end up realizing that the course doesn't even yeah. help them to get to where they're going to and then they end up going back to people like us yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> after spending money on buying the 
those courses that didn't still get them to where they want to get. This course still didn't get to the Lamborghini. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. that, but I don't blame them because um, when I started learning how to trade, I, I paid for such course, and um, and at the end of the day, I realized that the course wasn't really leading me to where I want to. Yeah. You know, and then I focused on learning the skill for the person teaching the skill, the strategy working, and not learning the skill because the person is driving a Lamborghini or living in a, a flashy house or whatever. Yeah. You know, it, it just, the perspective, the mindset, you know, I think anyone who wants to learn how to trade need to have that mindset shift. Like I was talking about, if you're learning how to be a doctor or a lawyer, you're not going out there looking to learn from, because the, the your lecturer drives a Lamborghini, then you, I want the lecturer that drives a Lamborghini. Yep. You know, it's like me falling over and cutting my leg and putting a plaster on it. Two weeks later, I unpeel it and it's healed and all of a sudden I'm a doctor. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> you know? that's what it is. Yeah, it tastes like, like in Forex because you just pressed a few buttons on your phone on the MT4 and you made profit. Now you're, prof you're a Forex yeah. trader. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're telling people, you know, I, like I saw this video and uh, the person was talking about how uh, she became a profitable trader in two days. You know, I'm like, this is absolutely impossible. You know, like it's absolutely impossible for you to yeah. become profitable. <laughs> delusional trader in two days yeah it's and then this person was talking about how she flipped twenty dollars to two hundred dollars to twenty four thousand in two weeks okay and i'm like this, <laughs> this is absolutely impossible yeah. in fact if you can flip 200 to twenty four thousand, then why don't you flip twenty four thousand to twenty four million yeah because it's two hundred twenty four thousand two two weeks that means the next two weeks you should <laughs> yeah. flip the twenty four thousand. yeah just keep going million. yeah you know, just keep going just yeah. keep going to the trillions. You know, but that's good. how you know that it, all those things, they, they actually don't work and it's all lies. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's true, then you, you just keep going with it. Yeah. There's no, no stopping. You keep going. That's so true. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you as well, Henry, is journaling trades. In the beginning of your journey, let's say to the middle to now, how was that? Well, how did that start off, even if you did to begin with, to if you started to journal trades to even now? How has that progressed or developed, would you say? So, journaling trades really helped me in the beginning because um, when I was learning, I was taking several losses and yeah. then I didn't really understand why I took a loss when I'm doing the very very same thing I did the last time, yeah. you know, but when I started to journal those trades, write out, okay, this week I took five trades and two were in profit. Why were these two in profit? I took screenshots, put it all in, uh, in a folder yeah. in my computer and then... Is that in an Excel sheet or Yeah, Google I Sheets? do. I do use yeah. Excel sheets, right, okay. but uh, at the same time, I have this folder in because then I had this iPad that I was using. So what I did was all my winning trades, I put them in just one folder in a note. So there's this uh, note on Apple. So they have these notes. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I put all the winning trades on that nice. notes. So what I do is at the end of the week, I'll study all the winning trades. Yeah. You know, because one mistake most traders make is they just take a win and they're not interested in looking at the win. Yeah. You know, like I want to know why I won this yeah. trade. Well, they'll focus on the losses. Why did I lose, yeah. lose, lose? Yeah. Rather than yeah. me focusing yeah. on my weaknesses, I want to yeah. focus on my strengths. Okay. You know, the things that I did right. What did I do right in this trade that made it be a winning trade? And the next one, I'm interested in the winning trades. I went through every single one I put them all there were so many i can't even remember how many but it was like so many trades yeah. so all i do is weekends i'll start scrolling through looking through all of them looking at why this trade worked this one why did it work why did that work going straight down and because i did the analysis i can remember yeah, yeah how yeah. i did the analysis yeah. and i wrote everything down on the chart as well and it helped me to know the actual strategy that works for me mm -hmm. rather than me looking at focusing on the ones that didn't work i still have a section where i go through i have yeah. like an excel where i go through the ones that didn't work out and i check why did this not work out the reason maybe because i wasn't paying attention to the higher time frame okay. or because i wasn't paying attention to the fundamentals or i was counter trending yeah things like that yeah, yeah the moment i just checked all those things out these are the reasons why this didn't work this that worked i want to know why they worked and i want to focus on that yeah 
to just do that <laughs> so rather than me thinking of this and that i just want to focus on just that yeah, nothing else you can see it's working on all of these trades because i'm yeah. seeing this is working yeah. it has worked so many times yeah so even if it even if i have a losing streak i'm not paying attention to the losses i'm paying attention to what just, has yeah. worked for just me replicate it and replicate it yeah. a million times over yeah yeah so that's basically how i went about to now come to a conclusion that this is the strategy that i'm gonna trade and i'm not gonna remove anything from this strategy yeah i'm always learning at the same time i'm always learning understanding why it didn't work out this time why i got taken out at break even or at a loss i'm always learning to adapt to improve the same strategy yeah i'm yeah. not trying to change it into anything else i'm only making sure it's as as refined yeah. as possible Just tune a few things here and yeah there. yeah yeah that's interesting. Um, so how long would you say that took you to start doing that in between when you started for you to think, right, I need to put all of these into a folder now because it's getting a bit ridiculous or did you just do that from the beginning? No, I didn't I didn't do that from the beginning because when I started trading, I, I wasn't even thought about journaling. Yeah. You know, like um, I started trading and they were like, yeah, you need to start live trading ASAP. And I'm yeah. like, okay. I didn't know that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so Jump I would, straight in. <laughs> yes, I jumped straight in, and to be honest, that's not the best way to learn how to trade. Yeah, like that's if, what I did as well. To be honest, yeah, though, I did for jump anyone in. watching, it's yeah. not the best way. I think if you want to start trading, you have to start from demo account before yeah, for sure. you now go into live trading because it, it helps to manage the emotions. You know, when you start live trading in the beginning, it just sets you back psychologically, and it makes you feel like this is not gonna work when yeah. you start taking a lot of losses you know because imagine like we were talking about uh, other professions like being a doctor imagine it was your first year in medical school and boom you're in, you're in the medical you're in the <laughs> yeah. surgery room yeah. and they're like yeah we need you to cut yeah. him open and bring out his liver and the kidney literally apron like, okay. on the way you go yeah <laughs> this is your like, first oh. day <laughs> first day you're yeah. in it heart surgery brain surgery <laughs> off you go yeah you know it, it's just how it, it's just when you try to compare other professions with forex trading you realize that you shouldn't dive in with life funds in the beginning yeah, you know, to yeah. start with demo accounts and um, like you were asking about the journaling my first year i didn't even journal anything my wins my losses nothing you know it was because i started trading forex in 2019 but then it was around ending of 2020 2021 i focused really into journaling and then 2022 2023 i just record even yeah so i usually just have that folder where i've already outlined all my winning trades yeah, so yeah. at the weekends i just go through them over and over again just to make sure that i have it in my mind that this is the strategy that i'm always going to focus on whatever else that any other trader is doing that works for them i actually don't care yeah yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that no other strategy works there are a thousand other strategies that's the best way to think works. though because you can't let what other people are doing even if it's working very well you yeah. can't let that enter your mind because if you've got something already that's working which you do just because someone else is doing something that's different to you that's working doesn't doesn't mean that you should let that seep into your trading because yeah. i've been victim to that in the past and it really messed things up massively i was trying to mix things up like now as i said earlier i've got three systems they're separate yep. that does that that does that that does that i'm not trying to merge them all together in yep. terms of the technicals yep. i'm saying yep. obviously on the account they are merged but with the technical perspective they've got their own separate ways of doing things so yeah i definitely agree with that definitely agree with that and also i actually did something similar as well when i was learning back in the day 2020 2021 when i was really getting into it heavily i would print the setups out yep. and i would this was when i was using the one minute time frame i don't use that anymore more but yeah. I would print the one minute time frame out at the specific higher time frame areas, supply yeah. demand, imbalances. Yeah. And I would literally, before I'd go to sleep every night, and I'm talking A4 pages, probably about that thick, I would just sit and just pile them over, just look 
them just so it's went into my brain obviously like i said i don't trade that way now but i think that level of commitment is what you've got to have because yeah. you know yeah. even like you saying when you look through the winners without you even knowing it or not that's being sunk into your subconscious mind yes true. And, and when you see that again on the live market that's when it's more of an automatic thing right now i'm going to look for a trade you know yeah. that pattern it's that pattern recognition that's what it's really about and in terms of the journaling now for myself i don't journal as much purely because i know what i'm looking for now with the systems now i don't recommend that for anyone watching that's brand new to trading i definitely recommend you journal your trades because that's as we were saying that's how you notice things that are happening that are making you money and it's also how you notice things that are happening that are consistently something that you're doing wrong for example they're obviously making you you lose money whereas now yeah i don't really journal as much but i was using notion for those of you that know notion that's basically a web-based app you can even yeah. have an app on your phone which is what i had you know you can have a you can make your tables like um you know you can put risk to reward time of day session yeah. pair all of the rest of it you can just make whatever you want up and something as well again i don't do that now but in the learning stages i, I really hammered in on it is end of day markups i don't know if you've ever done that so basically what it is is so I, I would use notion again for this i would create a folder for end of day markups on each pair that i would trade every single day at market close typically in the evening to be honest maybe 6 p.m 7 p.m yep. i would mark up the monthly mark up the weekly take screenshots of every single time frame daily yep. four hour 15 minute annotate everything about it put notes on there what's that done why is that happened and i did that for a good six to 12 months and doing that alone definitely allowed me to see certain behaviors in different currency pairs like one would do that more often than the other and you know once it's basically being in tune with the market yeah. i think that is a very very big positive if like i say if you are learning or want to learn i definitely recommend doing that because you know think of the opposite it's not going to do any harm by doing that because at the end of the day the way i see it you've really got to be like i said like i just said in tune with the market if you're putting money at risk and if you're wanting to gain money how can you do that without being in tune with the market or without being in tune with the specific currency pair that you're trading you can't you might get lucky here and there put a random trade on and you've made a load of money but it's all about consistency it's all about doing it day in day out having a repetitive system having something that you can repeat yeah. without even thinking about it without even thinking or shall I put on that trade? I don't think that fits my plan. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. You know, there's yeah. no there's no middle ground with it. Um, and it's I think the key to trading profitably and consistently is getting to that point psychologically. Where has it happened? Yes. Has it happened? No. Then I'm going to leave the trade alone, or leave the market alone, or I'm going to get in the trade and just is the trade going to hit TP stop loss, or am I going to get take out break even? That's it. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I do in terms of journaling now. And also like something that helped me massively is journaling literally just with a book and a pen yep. and it wasn't even necessarily only about the market sometimes I would journal about what I'd done that day and I, I, I got into that heavily in COVID times because we had nothing else to do we were at home most of the time if not all of the time you might go on the odd walk here and there but I really got into my own psychological state if that makes sense and coupling that with the market I would mark I would write out this pair could go there yeah. watch out if that happens yeah. um, news is coming out for some people that might not resonate but for some people it might do as well because when you write things down I feel personally it's more powerful even as something as simple as writing down goals that's something that I did in the beginning i still do that now but in terms of when i was learning and i wanted to get into funding literally every day i remember this so clearly every morning i would write out the same list of goals and just again it's just all about the subconscious mind if you're doing something over and over and over again it's going to become your reality yeah, there's no true. doubt about it yeah so i usually just have that folder where i've already outlined all my winning trades yeah, so yeah. at the weekends i just go through them over and over again just to make Make sure that I have it in my mind that this is the strategy that I'm always going to focus on. Whatever else that any other trader is doing that works for them, I actually don't care. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? It doesn't mean that no other strategy works. There are a thousand other strategies. That's the best way to think, works. though, because you can't let what other people are doing, even if it's working very well, you yeah. can't let that enter your mind. Because if you've got something already that's working, which you do, just because someone else is doing something that's different to you that's working doesn't, doesn't mean that you should let that seep into your trading. Because yeah. I've 
I've been victim to that in the past and it really messed things up massively. I was trying to mix things up. Like now, as I said earlier, I've got three systems. They're separate. Yep. That does that, that does that, that does that. I'm not trying to merge them all together in yep. terms of the technicals, yep. I'm saying. Yep. Obviously, on the account, they are merged. But with the technical perspective, they've got their own separate ways of doing things. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Definitely agree with that. And also, I actually did something similar as well when I was learning back in the day, 2020, 2021, when I was really getting into to it heavily i would print the setups out yep and i would this was when i was using the one minute time frame i don't use that anymore but yep. i would print the one minute time frame out at the specific higher time frame areas supply yep. demand imbalances yep. and i would literally before i'd go to sleep every night and i'm talking a4 pages probably about that thick i would just sit and just pile them over just look at them just so it went into my brain obviously like i said i don't trade that way now but i think that level of commitment is what you've got to have because yep. you know yep. even like you saying when you look through the winners without you even knowing it or not that's being sunk into your subconscious mind yes true. And, and when you see that again on the live market that's when it's more of an automatic thing right now i'm going to look for a trade you know yep. that pattern it's that pattern recognition that's what it's really about and in terms of the journaling now for myself i don't journal as much purely because i know what i'm looking for now with the systems now i don't recommend that for anyone watching that's brand new to trading i definitely recommend you journal your trades because that's, as we were saying, that's how you notice things that are happening, making you money. And it's also how you notice things that are happening that are consistently something that you're doing wrong, for example, that are obviously making you you lose money um whereas now yeah i don't really journal as much but i was using notion for those of you that know notion um that's basically a web-based app you can even yeah. have an app on your phone which is what i had you know you can have a you can make your tables like um you know you can put risk to reward time of day session yeah. pair all of the rest of it you can just make whatever you want up something as well again i don't do that now but in the learning stages i, I really hammered in on it is end of day markups I don't know if you've ever done that. So basically what it is, is so I, I would use Notion again for this. I would create a folder for end of day markups on each pair that I would trade every single day at market close. Typically in the evening, to be honest, maybe 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Yep. I would mark up the monthly, mark up the weekly, take screenshots of every single time frame daily, yep. four hour, 15 minute, annotate everything about it. You know, put notes on there. What's that done? Why has that happened? And I did that for a good six to 12 months and doing that alone, definitely allowed me to see certain behaviors in different currency pairs like one would do that more often than the other and you know once it's basically being in tune with the market yeah. i think that is a very very big positive if like i say if you are learning or want to learn i definitely recommend doing that because you know think of the opposite it's not going to do any harm by doing that because at the end of the day the way i see it you've really got to be like i said like i just said in tune with the market if you're putting money at risk and if you're wanting to gain money how can you do that without being in tune with the market or without being in tune with the specific currency pair that you're trading you can't you might get lucky here and there put a random trade on and you've made a load of money but it's all about consistency it's all about doing it day in day out having a repetitive system having something that you can repeat yep. without even thinking about it without even thinking or oh, shall i put on that trade i don't think that fits my plan if it doesn't it doesn't if it does it does you know there's yeah. no there's no middle ground with it um and it's i think the key to trading profitably and consistently is getting to that point psychologically has it happened yes has it happened then i'm going to leave the trade alone or leave the market alone or i'm going to get in the trade is the trade going to hit tp stop loss or am i going to get take out break even and also like something that helped me massively is journaling literally just with a book and a pen and it wasn't even necessarily only about the market sometimes i would journal about what i'd done that day and I, I i got into that heavily in covid times because we had nothing else to do we were at home most of the time if not all of the time you might go on the odd walk here and there but i really got into my own psychological state if that makes sense um and coupling that with the market i would mark i would write out this pair could go there yeah. watch out if that happens yeah. um news is coming out for some people that might not resonate but for some people it might do as well because when you write things down i feel personally it's more powerful even as something as simple as writing down goals that's something that i did in the beginning i still do that now but in terms of when i was learning and i wanted to get into funding 
literally every day i remember this so clearly every morning i would write out the same list of goals like and just, again it's just all about the subconscious mind if you're doing something over and over and over again it's going to become your reality yeah, there's no true. doubt about it